Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, June 15th edition of the Chaos Community Call. I am Elizabeth Barron. I'm uh, the community manager. I had to think for a minute. What, what, what am I? I don't know. Who is anyone? Um, I'm the community manager here, which is why I'm the one talking because I facilitate these meetings. Lucky you all. Um, just posted the minutes in the community or in the chat in the community chat. <sighs> yeah, one of those days. Uh, so anyway, feel free to leave your uh, name on the list of attendees if you would like. If you don't want to do that, completely fine as well. And as you can tell, we don't care if you have your camera on or off, whatever you want to do, super, totally, 100% fine with us. We're just glad you're here. So welcome, everybody. Um, we will go ahead and just, oh, I should add my name. We should just jump right into the... Um, to the agenda because we do have quite a few things on the list today so that's good uh, the first one is we just want to remind everyone about our open office hours that happen on mondays they um, go from 9 to 11 us central time and that's just a time where it's just open someone from the community is on the call on the the regular chaos channel which you are here right now if you're in this call um, and you can just pop in and ask any questions you want. If you're not sure where to find something, if you just want to say hi and um, figure out like what's going on, totally that's the time to do that. If you can't make those times, um, we also have a Slack channel. If you're into Slack, you can join that as well. Um, we can also drop a, a link to that Slack if you're not in there and you would like to be. But um, if you are a newcomer to Chaos, you do not have to register for those office hours. You can just show up and say hi. So we would uh, love you to do that. And if you are already a Chaos Community member and you've been here for a while and you feel like you could be one to answer questions that other people might have, we would love if you would like to volunteer to staff some of those hours and just hang out on the call. You can do your regular work. It's a little weird, I guess, kind of, but you can uh, just do your regular work and just have the Zoom open in case someone pops in. So uh, super easy because you're already probably maybe working at that time, maybe not. A lot of people probably aren't working at that time, but anyway, I digress. So um, yeah, so there's the links are in the minutes there. Uh, so whichever of those things apply to you, either as a as an uh, attendee to come and hang out or um, as someone who is gonna host those on behalf of Chaos. Does anyone have questions about that? I'm curious how they're going. It's something that we kind of just just started. Are we getting, are we getting people joining? What not at all. <laughs> no, not really. Um, we've had a few people uh, come in that were already in the chaos community just to come in and say hi and see how it's going, which was also awesome. Um, but yeah, as far as like actual newcomers, we haven't had any yet. But I think we've only done two of these. So we're hoping that it just takes a little time. So yeah, maybe it, we need some better marketing promotion. Yeah. Not yeah, we maybe someone has suggestions. I think we, we posted it on Twitter um, and we post it to Slack, but if there are other places we should be kind of reminding people of these, that would also be helpful. So if anyone has ideas about that, like I don't really post stuff to LinkedIn um, just because I, I don't, but we have a chaos page. If that would be somewhere, if you think people would see it, I can do that. I don't really use LinkedIn that much. So that's my fault. I wonder if we should post a reminder to the mailing list. I wonder if there are people oh. lurking that don't really participate. It's a great idea. I don't know. I mean, it seems like wow. such overhead, like you can just a really tiny like text that could go on LinkedIn and the mail. Yeah. Don't forget, really simple. Good ideas. If anyone has others, let me know. We should be doing something different. If Zoom is a problem, if that's a barrier, someone tell me that and we can figure something else out. We do, like I said, also have the office hours channel that's always open on Slack. And you may or may not get a, an immediate response, but you will get a response. So just throwing that out there as well for a little asynchronous communication because that's what I'm all about. All right, any other questions, comments? On that. All right, then we shall move along. 
So ChaosCon is planning um, full speed ahead. Um, we are probably like, I would say Matt, 90% sure it's gonna be on September 30th. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, I'm just waiting at this point. So I've been talking with Angela at the Linux Foundation just to, we asked for a lot. And then I think we learned it was going to cost a lot. <laughs> and so we asked for less. And um, so just getting those two things aligned. And it looks like just the language that they use is they're going to send us a proposal. And I, I just haven't received that yet. That's all. But I suspect it's right in line. And I mean, we do have, I mean, we do have um, funds if there is a small cost incurred for ChaosCon. So, I mean, it's, I don't see that as being a problem, at least at this point. And we could potentially get sponsors like we have in the past. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. Um, we also, for those who are curious, we are also going to try, I think, to, um, of course, depending on, you know, technical limitations, but we are going to try to live stream some of it. Um, the timing is going to be tricky on that because it is Pacific time in the States. So it's going to be even weirder for our poor European friends and those in India and China. Um, China actually might be okay. It might push to the next morning for them maybe, or actually that's not right. I don't know. Um, so anyway, it's going to be challenging, but it's always the challenge when <laughs> whenever you plan literally anything. So um, just wanted to let everyone know we are going to record the talks for sure, and um, we'll be posting them and talking about them and, and such. So um, even if you are not able to participate in real time, um, we hope that you will be still part of us and part of the community and, and participate asynchronously. And then we can have real time chats about the stuff if we want. Um, so we do have some options there, but it is top of mind for us to try to make it as virtually friendly as possible because it seems like most of our community is, is going to be there virtually. So do we know whether it's going to be morning or afternoon yet? I don't think so. I had requested morning. But they haven't, I don't think confirmed that, have they? No. no. Okay. Probably um, most people are going to try to, most of those groups are trying to get morning. I would imagine because people want to travel the evening. So we'll see. I wondered, um, I just put in the minutes listening to you talk, um, Elizabeth and also Don on sponsorship. Like we could, I'm wondering if we could be maybe a little creative on sponsorship too. So normally we ask for food. <laughs> it's really what we ask for. Um, but maybe thinking about sponsorship um, in ways to in increase inclusivity for the virtual event, um, like paying for video editing or assisting with streaming. I don't, I'm, I'm just thinking out loud here. I don't really know what those things might be, but trying to just improve inclusivity globally, if that is gonna be a challenge. Yeah, I think the planning committee has some things to think about for sure with regard to that, those kinds of issues. Um, so, and that is a nice segue into my next statement, which is if you would like to be on the planning committee, we usually do uh, chaos planning either asynchronously through Slack or we do it at the end of these meetings whenever we have time left over. So um, it shouldn't be too heavy handed for you if you would like to participate. Um, we try to make it as convenient as possible. So if you want to be on the planning committee, just let me or Georg know. If you know Georg, he's not here today, but if you know him. Um, and we can add you to the Slack channel. And there is also a mailing list. It's pretty low, low intensity, like not very much traffic on that. So don't worry about your inbox exploding. I mean, I guess it is kind of early in the planning, so I guess it could explode later, but for now, it's good. And especially if you have ideas around things like how we can make it more inclusive uh, as far as virtually or, um, you know, just accommodating a whole vast, you know, majority of our people who have a variety of things. So just let us know if you have ideas. We would, we're open to everything. No idea is a dumb idea. It's all awesome. Any questions about CASCON or being on that committee? Gosh. Are we gonna talk about, are we still ending at half past to talk about CASCON? Is that still? 
If we if we need to, yeah. I thought it was just whenever we were done with the agenda, well, we would use the rest of the time. But if we need to do a hard stop at uh, at half past, we can for sure. Um, I, I just it was mostly just done because I think I'm going to be the one that's responsible for ordering like t-shirts and stuff like that, and so I just need to. I was going to put that in the minutes too. I just need to get that done. Okay. Um, I kind of like to. I mean. I don't know how big of a hassle it would be, but maybe something that we could send to people who can't attend in person. You know, just that would be really awesome. For virtually, you know, even if it's just a sticker and a, you know, how we do the poker chips, something that we could drop in the mail. Yeah, that would be awesome. It's worth mentioning here in the badging um, community, we've been working on putting together some kind of site where someone can, it's kind of like add to your cart, but it's a gift. Um, so it might be a good way to collect um, or to securely provide something in the mail to someone that we, we're working on that in the badging project. So we'll kind of bring that up to this meeting when we can too, or the chaos count planning meeting. It's like Zazzle or I forget the names of a lot of them, but it's like the way that Google did it for a season of docs was you, you add a t-shirt to your cart, but it's free. And then you, and then you give them your information as if you're shopping, but it's all free. Um, so that might be a good way to distribute those uh, extras. It might be worth syncing up with somebody from the Linux Foundation because I know the, the CNCF um, has some things like that. And what we don't want to be in the business of is, you know, collecting people's personal information, first of all, like addresses, um, but also like customs forms and shipping is a flipping nightmare. Um, and so if we can if we can get somebody who already knows how to do that, like a logistics company that people can just order from, that would be fab. Yeah, we're currently working with Emily at Triple ESA Open, um, who does marketing there. But um, I think any kind of collaboration on this would be helpful too. I would just plus 1,000 to getting a distribution company or a logistics company to ship all these up. <laughs> Instead of like, I don't know, a handful of us trying to do it. So that would be fantastic. Yeah, because just to be clear, like uh, people in the US don't face this nearly as much, um, but I have had several people ship me things that were just small things like t-shirts. And I ended up having to pay extra customs charges because the customs forms weren't filled out right. And that's what happens when you get individuals like shipping stuff off to countries where they don't understand the customs forms. That would be me. <laughs> <laughs> Those forms, fair point. That's an excellent point. Anybody else have uh, questions, comments, ideas, something to say? All right, rock on, let's move ahead. Uh, next item on the list is the DEI internal audit. I'm not sure if Matt wants to give a quick update on that, or I can, it doesn't matter. Hey, why don't you, you can start and I can just going to say that um, we are, um, just for those of you who don't know, we are um, going through a process by which we reflect and review our own DEI internal practices for the chaos project itself, just to make sure that we're doing all we can to be as inclusive and welcoming um, and diverse as possible. Um, we're just, that's something that's extremely important to us and we value it very highly. So we are going through this uh, reflective Part of the audit uh, entails a, um, a survey that we are working with a few external consultants on, um, advisors, I guess, um, on uh, the things that we need to ask or would like to know about what's on your mind. So we are gonna be sending out that survey. And if you are part of the community, we would really, really, really value your opinion and um, what you have to say on that. Like, I can't stress that highly enough. So um, we, it's, it's almost ready to go. We're just finalizing the final um, logistical details about how we distribute it to make sure that uh, we do it properly. And um, it has been approved through the, um, the university, uh, what's that called, IRB? What's that stand for again, Matt? The, just a review, internal review board. Just it's an, it's not ethics, <laughs> it's just- yeah. a, just, just to make sure that we're doing, we're handling data properly and we're, you know, following the proper procedures that we need to, to just to make sure that um, we're doing it as the, the best that we can. So that's where it stands. So keep an eye out for that. I know we bring this up sometimes at the meetings, but um, it will be coming across 
some method of communication to you either um, we're, we're not sure yet exactly we haven't decided how we're going to distribute that yet but um, we will definitely let you know so please keep your eyes open for that and we again would just so 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 love for you to take the five minutes it, it will take or 10 minutes to, to fill out the survey because it will it will mean the world to chaos and it will make us better in the future so questions on that what did i leave out matt I think the survey is is probably the big thing that's going to be happening in the next, I'd say, just a couple weeks would be my guess, because the survey is ready to go. Um, but also, like part of this, the audit, I would say, has resulted in things like the office hours, like trying to, you know, create an opportunity for people to connect. Um, so some of the, I think some of the things that you see that we're trying to do to retain people and um, make a more open and welcoming a way to start in the community is a result of this audit as well. Um, and so then the one of the other things that we're doing is right now we're going through all of our own metrics that we've developed, whether they're in the DEI working group or in common or in risk or wherever they might be, um, to kind of think about how we would apply the metrics to our own project. And really not the entire set of metrics, but the metrics that are related to DE diversity, equity, or inclusion, um, and how kind of organizing them by DEI and then also organizing them by perhaps metrics that are sensible and they're all sensible, but metrics that should be in place now, for example, having a project code of conduct or an event code of conduct and others that might take a little bit more time uh, to implement. So kind of thinking about phases of those metrics as well. So using our own, using the chaos metrics on the chaos community seemed like a sensible, sensible thing to do. So that's it for me. Any other questions? Well, there weren't any questions, but any questions about this? Well, I guess I'll, I'll make one more comment. So part of this reflection to what we're doing is we're also looking at ways that that our own reflection can not only inform the chaos community, but could help other projects as well. So the processes by which we go through this reflection, again, for chaos, but how can we kind of scale this work out beyond chaos? And we've been working, I mean, I think it's fair to talk about it here, but working with folks at GitHub, um, thinking about how obviously GitHub as a platform for so many open source communities, how we can create a program um, by which we could help maintainers of open source projects really reflect on their own DEI practices um, and how they could center DEI in their in their own projects. And so kind of building off of the work that we're doing here at this local perspective and thinking about how they can have a larger impact, not just with the chaos project, but with other projects that might have an interest in, as well in doing a similar audit. more to come on that that should be pretty exciting what questions do we have comments concerns any of the above nothing all right we're blowing through this agenda like i don't know something really fast okay Let's do GSOC updates. I see we have Drew and Ritik on the call. Um, if either of you, Ritik, you already posted yours to the mailing list. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for doing that. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, actually, I just registered on the Medium uh, two weeks before, and I will be posting my weekly blogs on that. And also related to that, uh, there will be a few updates in the working groups as well. We will be making some PRs as a part of the standardization process because it's a prerequisite for our project of automation. Thank you for doing that um, and posting your your blog, your links to the blogs and everything. And we'll we'll be um, posting those also in the newsletter if that's okay with you all. Yeah, sure. Awesome. And then we'll also uh, be linking to them here as well. Dhruv, do you want to say a little bit about how things are going for you? Yeah, hi. Hello, everyone. So I would be starting out my blogs. Like I'm planning to start out 
and on the project side we are extending right now dependency worker to get the ossf information uh data so basically it's working uh, but it's working only for me so <laughs> this is basically a nice dependency case where i i would be working on right now on installing scripts to get them all the dependencies so that uh it could also work for them so basically i am setting up dependencies for them to analyze their dependencies which is which sounds a little weird but yeah that's that's what i am currently doing it does not sound weird it sounds super interesting so thank you for that update that's great that's, that sounds really cool does anyone have questions for Ritik or Drew? Anybody? I'd just like to, we, Ritik and Yash, um, we meet on Mondays just to kind of go through the project. So it was a good meeting yesterday. Um, I'll say, and the amount of work already that Ritik and Yash have done, you've all seen the work that they've been doing in the working groups <laughs> prior to Google Summer of Code to help standardize uh, the, in the working groups has been quite impressive. So I'll say that, so thank you, just so we can do the release process. Um, I think, right, hard to do a, a standard release when all of your data sources are different. <laughs> they have to all be wrangled together. Um, so thank you for that. And then, you know, the other thing, and this has come up before, the other thing that we're, kind of, we're starting to think about is to help with translations. And I know we've talked about this before, but kind of the, the technical ways to get this done, um, as well as the, the people that need to be involved in the translation process as well. So I think the, the standard release process is a little bit more technical than perhaps the socio, more socio-technical process that is translations. So we'll be, I don't know that that'll be solved, by the end of summer, <laughs> the translation stuff, but I think there could be some nice suggestions made by the end of summer. Yeah, initially we included that in our stretch goals, but if the automation process is completed beforehand, that, that can be surely looked upon. So, so thanks for that work. Also, uh, we were thinking like to rename our project to Mars Metric Automated Release System, if that's okay. You want to, you want to, no problem with that. <laughs> Mars, like so the, the planet Mars, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. the community is also in like chaos in my defense. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm going to request uh, Mars t-shirts for our, our GSOX team then. So we'll, we'll get weekly Mars updates. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to set a precedent for everything we do now. Everything's going to have to be <laughs> planetary named. <laughs> Could be a question we ask for next year's Google Summer of yes. Code. What will you name your project? <laughs> your acronym. Not only what, what will you do, but what cool name will you have? <laughs> okay. The person who gets Jupiter is going to have a really hard time. I'm just saying. But anyway, I digress. OK. Um, any other questions, comments? Anything else on Musak? Rock on. Let's move ahead. So we had a question from last week um, that was, can we create Slack channels dedicated to each project? And I think the answer was yes. And I think we decided to do some kind of naming that would lump the channels together on the Slack list. And I think Georg, someone remind me, I could look. Georg, I think was gonna jot down those, let me look here. Sorry, it was Sean. Sean is going to formulate a policy and spread it around for comments. Um, and then we're gonna add that to the community handbook once we are, are okay with it. I, it's pretty lightweight, I think he was gonna do that. Sean is on vacation, so we will have to wait until next week to get an update for that. For those who are on Slack a lot more than I am, is there a concern about adding a lot of channels to an org? 
There was, um, and Kevin's nodding vigorously, yes. Um, I think that the way to, there's a couple ways to mitigate that. And one is that you can name them similarly so that at least they're together and they come in chunks, like if you're looking at the whole list. And I think the other thing that we talked about last week was going through, um, when we archive the minutes for the meetings to go through the Slack channels and see which ones haven't had any activity for a year okay. and then archiving those as well. So, and I think that that process has already started. I've been in a couple where um, it's been kind of kind of dead in there and, and someone, I think Georg came in and said, hey, is it okay if we archive this? And you know, most people were like, oh yeah, yeah. We just needed it for this short time. So, okay. and ad hoc. Is that cool? Does that make sense? It does. Thanks. And I think this is the kind of stuff that Sean's going to just write down of like what we talked about, what we decided, and then we can at least have a some have something to work from for the future. We can iterate it as we need. Iterate on it, I should say. Thanks. Any questions about Slack? Is it annoying if for the people who are in Slack in the general channel, is it annoying to have all that bot stuff or is it useful? I find it useful. I feel like there's like a positive and a negative to creating a bot spam channel where like, yeah, the bot spam goes there, but nobody goes to look at it at that point. <laughs> so I like it the way it is. Yeah, I think there are few and that few and wow, can't talk today. Talking is hard. There aren't that many posts. And so I think it's, I think it's fine if it was, you know, if it was noisier, it might be a problem, but it's a few posts a day uh, and they're helpful. So it's good. Awesome. I, would, I, would, I have one suggestion, like on the Slack, we observe like uh, there are uh, bots which are saying there's no activity today. Instead of popping those, just like uh, there's a one event today will be sufficient. Like you reduce the bot activity. Like I see in uh, badging, so every day I see there is no activity today, that message comes. Rather than popping every day a single message, there should be just, okay, today is one activity or any particular activity is a suggestion. I It'll reduce that, the board activity. Yeah, I completely agree 100%. I think it's a limitation of the bot, uh, the, the integration. It just takes the calendar regardless and it doesn't let you uh, put any parameters on that at all, which is a shame, but maybe in the future, or maybe if someone's really good at coding, they could um, make a new a new integration or something. I don't know. That that integration is, is between Slack and Google Calendar is is a little janky. It's not perfect for sure. And but I completely hundred percent agree with you, Nod. Um well, I will trust that you all will let me know if it does get annoying and obnoxious. So just, just holler at me and I will tweak it or put it in a separate channel or something of just notifications. And then you can ignore it completely. <laughs> so, all right, cool. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, that was it. That was the end. And look at that, Matt, we're at half past. No, we had the, the Perfect time. Summer, summer 21 of open source. <laughs> I completely skipped over that. I'm very sorry. Why did I do that? I don't know. Um, did you put that on there? Yeah. Okay. So that's the name. I didn't know that was the name of the program. I'm like, did I write that <laughs> open source promotion plan? <laughs> okay. No, so, I wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember writing it that way. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Benu. Um, but this is the program. It's the kind of the Google Summer of Code equivalent that's based in China. Is that that's this right? <laughs> that's the open source. Yeah, program. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it looks like we had one applicant. Is that correct? Uh, for Grimoire Lab projects, there is one applicant. Uh, I'm not sure about the other two project ideas. Uh, I think. Uh, Share or else someone can uh, comment more about it. Okay. And because those... uh, she was managing the whole thing, uh, maybe she can see all the applicants who can who would apply in the uh, application portal. There is a different application portal similar okay. to Gotcha. Google. So yeah, we need to check with her. 
Okay. Well, there's one. I'll merge this pull request to to be the applicant. Yeah, yeah. There's only one applicant that is for uh, Grimot Lab project. Okay. And I think the deadline's passed, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks. And if you, if anyone wants more information about what they're talking about, um, we do discuss that in the Asia Pacific call from time to time, which happens on Wednesdays at 8 a.m. U.S. Central, every other Wednesday, which I think this is the week for it, if I'm not mistaken. So tomorrow at 8 a.m. Central, be there or be square. Um, questions, comments on that? Nope. All right. And we already did number seven, which was the Slack channel creation policy. So I think we're done. We're finished. Uh, whoever is on the Chaos Con planning committee, please stick around for a little bit so we can talk about some stuff. If you're not on the committee, you want to be, you want to stick around, totally fine. Uh, but otherwise, you are free to go and enjoy the rest of your wonderful, awesome day. And we're so happy to see you. We'll see you next week, same time, same place. Hi, I'll stop. Hey everybody.